Aha! Okay, so what is electrolysis? <clears throat> well, it's uh, it's a word which is made out of two words, electro from electricity and lysis, uh, which means to split. So here we have a beautiful infographic showing that the electricity is splitting something, but what we're going to be looking at is how it can split solutions. So the question is, how does it do that? Well, here we go. We've set up and what we've built is a power supply, which we can change the voltage from. And the power supplies, positive and negative terminals are going to be suspended in a solution. We're going to use water and also some copper sulfate that I just happened to find lying around. And we can vary the voltage that's being applied across the two electrodes and we can have a look at how that affects the electrolysis process. Now, as you can see, I've labelled our positive terminal here and our negative terminal. And that's important because our solution, this one here, for example, our copper sulfate, is made out of a couple of different things. It's made out of a positive copper ion, and it's also got a negative sulfate ion. Uh, it's a salt like uh, any other salt is made out of a positive metal and a negative non-metal component. So for example something you'd have in the kitchen would be uh, normal table salt which would be positive sodium and negative chlorine. Now when we apply a voltage across those two electrodes while they're in the solution it creates a potential difference in the solution and that will affect these positive and negative ions and just to give you some sort of an analogy it's not identical uh, but you can think of it in similar terms when our um, magnets for example uh, if we've got a positive uh, charge it will attract negative ions in the same way that the magnets North Pole would attract the South Pole the negative terminal will attract the positive ions in the same way that the South Pole attracts a North Pole not the same but you can think of them in similar terms so what we should see if we apply a voltage in a solution of salt is that our positive ions, our cations, will move towards the negative terminal and our anions, the negative ones, will move towards the positive terminal. Now what's nice with our copper sulfate is that we'll be able to see that happen quite dramatically and we'll get an instantaneous reaction from this and you'll be able to see all the copper uh, cations sticking to the cathode which is the negative terminal. We can also see what happens if we just run a current through water you can see bubbles of 
hydrogen gas coming out of it uh, from the cathode because hydrogen is positive and it gets attracted to a negative terminal. We have to really crank up the voltage for that. It doesn't like doing it, but it'll do it and we can get it to do it on this. I have tested it. Okay, so let's have a slightly closer look at what you would expect to see if you were to run this practical yourself. Okay, here we are at the electrolysis station. <clears throat> so if we have a quick look inside our beaker of water, we've got our positive terminal and we've got our negative terminal. On the end of them, all we've got is a little bit of copper foil. Well, they said it was copper in the kit. It looks like brass to me. So they're being cheapskates. We've got a little uh, power regulator there, which uh, we can change the voltage on. And we've got a multimeter that is going to show us how much voltage is being applied across these two terminals. So let's switch it on. Let me sure see it lights up. Beautiful. We're running at about 20 volts. Well, 18.8, we'll crank that up in a little bit. And if we have a look in here, you can see a few bubbles of hydrogen. There we go. There we go, the electricity is splitting the water. I suppose you could call that hydrolysis because you are splitting water. And you don't really see an awful lot coming off of that it's a positive electrode. I'm thinking maybe the oxygen just dissolves into the water or something, but uh, the hydrogen not so much. And you can see those bubbles popping off of there quite happily. Let me just crank the voltage up a little, uh, to its maximum. We'll only get another couple of volts out of it, but we'll see if that makes much of a difference. Turns out that is full power. So what we can do instead is just lower it a little bit and you should see that there are fewer bubbles being produced let's uh let's try that uh, me screwdriver on the regulator turn it down a bit uh, come on you can do this there we go so I'll drop it down to about half power there we go and there you go, instant. So you can see there that the amount of hydrogen that we're producing is a lot less if we run it at half voltage, which, you know, is kind of what you would expect. Okay, experiment number two, copper sulfate. Now, if you listened to what we said before, we should be splitting our copper sulfate into copper metal ions, which will form a brownish dark crust on our negative terminal and sulfate ions which will maybe make some bubbles on this terminal what more likely is going to happen we won't see much of the positive terminal because it will start making sulfuric acid in the solution so we won't get an awful lot of activity on that red but we might see a little bit of bubbling but probably not a lot now i have turned our regulator down as low as it will go i'm ready with the power Let's have a look at what sort of reaction we get when we apply a voltage. So three, two, one, boom. Oh, it's going darker. Let's see if we can look in there. It's going darker. We will compare the two uh, when we've run it for a little bit. Got a tiny bit of bubble edge going off. We're only at one and a half volts. Let's stop it there. And we'll just have a quick look. Oh, right. Can you see how that's starting to look a little bit tarnished? So what we'll do. Yeah, just you can just see that kind of crusty brown residue starting to form on there, especially on the edges, actually. Maybe that's a bit cleaner on the edge bit of a better contact but uh, what we'll do is I'll just pause the video clean it off and we'll crank it up and you'll see it just absolutely smash it to black almost instantaneously okay we're cleaned up we've got a nice shiny electrode again and what I've tried to do is leave a bit of it out of the solution so you can see the difference when it's finished in let's get that to focus for you okay so applying the power in three Two, one, go. 
Ooh. 12 volts. Oh, there we go. That one's fizzing. And we're almost black already. There we go. Let's turn it off and we'll take the electrode out. Oh, look at those little flecks of copper that have fallen off. There we go. So you can see that our copper has been rapidly deposited on the negative terminal there. It doesn't look very coppery because it's just been slapped on really quick and when you don't have a nice smooth flat surface with metals they tend to make a, a much darker colour. But uh, there you go, there's our electrolysis on some copper. Now we can try this also on a silver nail so I'll rig that up for you. And what we'll try and do is get a silver nail to go copper coloured. As it happens, I had an old garbage uh, Allen key lying around, so we'll just chuck that in, and it goes. Uh, so we've got some on there. I'm going to change the voltage down so that it applies the copper nice and slowly. I'm going to leave it to run for a while, and I will show you the results after it's been running for a few minutes. Here's uh, just a little thing that uh, oh, get that focus. There we go. Just something that I noticed while I was flipping this around. If we get our, oh, if you listen carefully, I'll show you what that is. This power regulator shows you that it's the electricity. You see that little LED there? Watch, it's gonna go absolutely mental. I'm gonna tap them together. It does not like it when you touch them together. There you go, there's the, Proof that it's electricity. Right, it's uh, it's had a little bit of time now. This thing is not focusing. My goodness. Right, so let's have a look. What results we've got? There we go. A bit more light. There you can see the copper. This thing is trying to. It is trolling me. Come on, focus. You can see the cop you can nearly see the copper silly thing right okay so in this horrendously blurry image you can see we've got that nice orangey color there and that's our copper and at the top there it's still steel copper steel so you can see or perhaps not so much that the uh, copper has plated onto the steel i'm going to stop this for a minute and get this focus back to normal okay let's wrap this up so what should we take away with this so our solution is made up of different ions and what is an ion an ion is any atoms with a charge so that includes all sorts of different things sodium which are positive chlorine ions negative magnesium which is a metal, two positive charges, oxygen, two negative charges, and bromine, like you get in hospital cleaning products, that's what gives it its incredible smell, is negative. The ions that we have in solution, cat ions, you see what they did there, are all positive. For example, the metals, we said copper, magnesium, there are tons and tons of others. All positive metal ions are cations. Anions, they're all negative. We looked at some examples like chlorine, bromine, fluorine. Let's hope you never come in contact with uh, free-floating chlorine. That is nasty. But yeah, a little, a little trick, a little trick. Cats, as we can all agree are positive delightful creatures anions sounds a little bit like onions and onions make you cry which is negative cat ions positive anions sounds like onions negative and the last thing our electrodes that we used cathode is negative and it attracts those positive metal ions our anode is positive, therefore it attracts the opposite, the negative non-metals. 
Okay, and that is a quick rundown of electrolysis. Hopefully this will be useful for those of you doing key stage four studies, and I hope you got something useful out of this. Thanks very much. Tatty buys.